us. Coal miners memorials have been built as public monuments, such as in the town of Minersville, Pennsylvania. But this is a public undertaking, not a private one, as in David A.'s case. What he has created is truly unique. In his book, The Savage Mind, Claude Levy Strauss describes the bricolore. The bricolore speaks not only with things, but also through the medium of things, giving account of his personality and life by the choices he makes between the limited possibilities. The bricolore may not ever complete his purpose, but he always puts something of himself into it. This term, bricolore, applies to David A. Jack Santino studied the painting of murals on the gable ends of houses in Ireland and their relationship to allegiance to either the Republican or Loyalist Irish political parties in his article, Public Protest in Popular Style. He believes the very existence of these paintings is seen and felt as an act of resistance, opposition, and assertion of presences by members of the other side, and also by those in power and the ruling elite. I agree with Santino and draw a parallel that these folk paintings voice an act of resistance to a political issues, just as David A.'s memorial protests the government's infringement on his rights. Holly Everett's analysis article, Roadside Crosses and Memorial Complexes in Texas, describes the meaning derived in the spontaneous shrines that spring up along the roadsides in Texas where a tragic accident has occurred. Upon passing these shrines, family members have commented, but I have to say, it was kind of nice just to drive by and see, just that there was a memory of what had happened there, you know? This parallels the meaning applied to the local populace of Higgins. David A. commented that, I had thousands and thousands of people here from the Holy Eastern Coast already uh, come here to, to see it, and uh, a lot of papers and stories on it, and send a lot of books here and there, and uh, people, family, they, they were happy, they cried. It's a holy smokes. I thought my son or my dad or my grandfather had forgotten about. Robert James Smith studies the meanings of Australian roadside memorials in his article, Roadside Memorials, Some Australian Examples. He observed many memorials placed along a road which was in need of repair and was neglected for years by the government, causing many fatalities along its span. In his conclusion, he states, There is a large amount of through traffic. For over 10 years, there has been a concerted public campaign to get the Pacific Highway upgraded. Though I have observed no example of a memorial directly accusing the authorities of poor road quality, the roadside memorials should still be read as a silent criticism of local road conditions. I agree with his analysis, and furthermore, I believe this silent criticism is exactly what David A. Lucas is doing along Route 25 in Higgins. In 1997, George Monger published a brief article on folklore in which he catalogs the existence of roadside memorials in England. His comments are appropriate that the public shares in the grief of victims by viewing these shrines. It is an act of remembrance, too, and of solidarity, a symbolic coming together of the community in mourning, and an expression of strangers' support for the bereaved. Santino writes of the public outcry in his book, Spontaneous Shrines and Public Memorializations of Death. Performative commemoratives, the concept includes, but is not restricted to spontaneous shrines, invite participation. Unlike the funeral procession one happens to run across, they also invite interpretation. Once set out before an undifferentiated public, polysemy inherent in these assemblages allow for a broad range of readings and associations by passers-by, regardless of the initial intentions of the originators. After studying this subject, I wholeheartedly agree with Santino's evaluation. Lucas's memorial is a performative commemorative. Santino goes on to say, We insist, the shrines insist, by their disruption of the mundane environment, They're calling attention to themselves. They insist on us acknowledging the real people, the real lives lost, the devastation to the commonwealth that these politics hold. By translating social issues and political actions into personal terms, the shrines are themselves political statements. They are the voice of the people. Spontaneous shrines place the deceased individuals back into the fabric of society, into the middle areas of commerce and travel, into everyday life as it is being lived. It seems as if people are reacting to the mass industrialization of death and the alienation of contemporary society with new folk traditions, rituals, and celebrations. In Santino's anthology, 
Harriet F. Sinney's interpretation of roadside memorials is that spontaneous memorials are often messages to those in control from the populace they govern. The coal miners memorial is a message to the government, a protest of the regulations imposed upon the hard-working people who feel their way of life is vanishing. My assessment of the meaning of the coal miners memorial and its maker David A. Lucas is that it is a reaction to the end of an era. As the United States makes its transition from the industrial age, a time in which most Americans worked in industrial production, to the information age, where we are now seeing most industrial production done overseas, and our own people are being absorbed into the service industry. The time of coal miners working underground, bringing their tons of coal to market is passing. And while this comes to an end, there are people like David A. who have lived their lives in coal. This way of life is all they know, all they care about and hold dear. Their town thrives on it. They want to go on, but they find it increasingly difficult to carry on, as evidenced in my interview with David A. Lucas. The hardware shop owner has been put out of business by the Home Depot. The local grocer has been put under by the lower prices and bulk purchasing power of Walmart. Just as these small town businesses go by the wayside, the independent coal miner competes with multi-million dollar strip mining corporations and feels he has been put under by the federal government's regulation of the industry. Independent coal miners have a love for what they do. They hold their occupation in high esteem and they are watching it disappear before their eyes. David A. has sacrificed too many lives of his fathers and brothers to leave quietly. The coal miners memorial has been created to commemorate those lives, but it also has a performative feature in that it makes the public aware of the struggle with the government regulators and with the letting loose of the ties that have strongly bound the communities of this region. Now that's our government at work. That's, a U, that's a U, old USA. That's sad, but that's why our company's in the shape it's in. I gotta show respect to the dead because the federal government doesn't show us respect for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You mean? And uh, that's like that's what it all come about, you know. And I'm proud of it. It's a land more than a valley.